Okay, hello there. We're here again with yet another book review. Uh, this time I want to review The Book of Why by Julia Pearl. And because I know that, you know, I've taken a lot of notes, so some of these reviews that I'm making can be pretty lengthy. I'm going to try to split it into parts that are at most 15 minutes long because nobody watches any YouTube video that lasts more than, perhaps even more than 10 minutes. But uh, let's see if we can work that out. So as usual, let's start with some background about this book, some information. The edition I'm reading is the Penguin one. There is a hardback uh, edition that is before this one. The Book of Why is a book written by Julia Pearl and Dana McKenzie. And information, as I said, this edition is published by Penguin University Press. It was published in um, 2019, so that's uh, four years ago. Uh, quite a hefty book. I mean, it's not that big in number of pages. That would be a little bit less than 400. The, the, the pure text of the book uh, without the notes and everything is 372. But it's quite dense. Mm, it's quite a dense book. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. But, but that, that I'll comment on that at the end of it. Or in the last review. Uh, what is this book about? What type of book is it? I would generally classify it into a popular science book, although the requirements that it makes on the reader in a lot of chapters, especially thinking of chapters 7 and 8, will mean that if you have some background in um, statistics, you will definitely be able to profit from the book much more than if you don't. If you've taken a university undergraduate course in, in statistics, it will take you a long, long, long way. So, uh, what's the topic of the book? So, a very general, um, uh, a very general reflection. This is a book in which uh, Julia Pearl reflects about um, the incorporation of causation into statistical models. The main thesis the book seems to make is that traditionally, statistics from its origins until today has basically ignored um, causation and it has just stayed at the level of correlations, and there are reasons why, why it followed this path, but anyway, he considers it a wrong path, and in his own personal work, he has been fighting since at least the 80s, if not earlier, to, to incorporate causal, causality and, and, and causal thinking into statistics, as he believes it makes, it gives it greater explanatory power, and so on. He, it's also connected with machine learning, which is was which was the field in which Judea Pearl started working. And uh, he, one of his main theses is, is, is that we can only create intelligent uh, machines, that is, uh, intelligent artificial intelligence, that sounds a bit of an oxymoron, uh, if we incorporate causal thinking patterns into the ways that um, machines um, conceptualize the world. He, he believes that will be a, a very, very important um, factor in, in, in developing intelligent, artificial intelligence. Um, he, he has a stake in this issue, like this book is at the same time a general overview of the history of statistics, which is juxtaposed and contrasted with the development of um, a sub-branch of statistics in which he was, uh, Judea Pearl was the co-founder, which is called a Causal Inference, which tries to incorporate causality basically through um, this sort of arrow diagrams that, that, that appear in, in the letters of the Book of Why. We could perhaps give a bigger or, or a better example from the book, you know, things like this and others. So these arrow charts uh, allow to see causality and allow to work with it, and um, they, 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 or this one, and being able to make a good, mm, a good causal diagram is the first step to applying then complex mathematical tools to, 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 to checking and getting information out of the graph. Uh, so I, I was saying there is at the same time a story of statistics which is mixed with Judea Pearl's personal story of developing uh, inferential calculus, uh, sorry, um, developing the, the, the Causal, uh, causal inference. So he starts explaining how he worked in something when in, I think it was in the 80s that was called Bayesian, uh, Bayesian analysis. 
uh, Bayesian network, sorry. And uh, well, he explains that uh, you know Bayesian networks were a way of trying to get machines to move from 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 just having to act out on all the input that is given, and and rather to you know calculate probabilities of different outcomes. So so guessing, maybe making some guesses, some causal, some proto causal uh, guessings. And uh, well, he, he explains that you know after that that got him running into the path of actually incorporating uh, causality into statistics. He afterwards explains how he developed um, different mathematical and intellectual uh, tools, basically um, uh, the do calculus and a few other uh, mathematical techniques that allowed him to 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 deal uh, rather successfully with uh, statistical issues. So, so that's the general impression. Um, uh, as, 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 as I was saying before, you know, uh, Judea Pearl is part and parcel in this debate. He's not an objective um, evaluator of this, of this field and these developments. He clearly takes a stance, uh, uh, in, in, and sometimes it feels like a very partisan stance in, in, in furthering this uh, causal inference uh, that he has been working on and castigating traditional statistics and modern statisticians for ignoring it. And, you know, he makes a good case, uh, like like he, he, he takes the, the example of tobacco and shows how the rejection of causality really, really made it up an uphill battle for, for scientists in the 50s and 60s to get the causal connection between tobacco smoking and cancer accepted. So, yeah, very controversial in some respects. Okay, so, so this is the overview of the book. I think uh, we should go into a little bit more detail. And while I was reading, I took a lot of notes. So I'm going to dissect the book chapter by chapter. And the book has 10 chapters. So let's start with the first one. So the first one is called uh, The Ladder of Causation. And basically, this chapter explains that, like, when you analyze reality, you have, like, these three levels. There's a very interesting graph that he shows in, 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 in the perception of causality and how it affects uh, how, how organisms work with it. This is, this is the graph, the picture. So he says there's three levels. Uh, there's the lowest level, which is uh, association, which uh, something that even mm, very primitive machines uh, or very basic animals can do. There's a second uh, rung, which is intervention, which is you know asking questions like what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? What would Y be if I do X? How can I make Y happen? And humans probably were the first creatures to really develop this in in, in in a complex way, and finally, there's the counterfactuals, the the last level where you where you consider hypotheticals, so things that haven't happened, uh, um, but but you can imagine them happening if things had been different. So his thesis is that only humans actually have been able to reach stage three. So uh, so, so okay, humans are pretty complex, but even three year olds are capable of reaching level three. So so it's not just intelligent humans, not just Einstein's. So you have this ladder of causation in which um, intervention and counterfactuals are very interesting. But the, the problem he, he, he establishes is that traditionally statistics has only focused on stage one. So it basically reduces uh, causality to just um, probabilities. You know? And his, his, his thesis is that if we are to develop intelligent AI, intelligent AI will need to grasp causation and be able to break the rules of logic of its programming or of its code. So the main point would be that while probabilities in code are beliefs about a static world, causality tells us whether and how the probabilities change when the world changes. So it's more dynamic. Uh, whether this, 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 this change in the world is an actual intervention or an act of the imagination. Okay, let's move to chapter two. So chapter two, from buccaneers to guinea pigs, the genesis of causal inference, uh, basically starts with the beginning of, 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 of statistics. So it takes us to Thomas Galton and his lectures in 19th century Britain. And, well, he explains how Thomas Galton, uh, the father of statistics, discovered the quincunx, which is this fancy contraption here, uh, which when you pour balls on top, it, it randomly generates something like a normal distribution. And uh, his first interpretation of this was that 
there was a causal law of nature at work here. But uh, you know, very very soon he 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 started to discover some problems with this, and uh, he discovered other things like the the regression towards the mean in statistics, and Galton changed his mind, and he decided that um, correlation was not necessarily causal, and in fact he he decided against using causality in talking about correlations or statistics. And this was continued by Galton's um, disciples, uh, like Pearson, like uh, he he insisted that causation is just repetition and that um, anyway it's unprovable. He becomes the, the pope of the new statistical church, the church biometric, and uh, so he starts a path that leads to the rejection of uh, any attempts of including causality in the field of statistics. There's the, the famous maxim that correlations in statistical data do not equate causation. Um, still, Pearson has to deal with problems like uh, correlations that are spurious. There's correlations that that clearly are just, you know, um, the result of chance, where there's no connection between one or the other. Uh, well, um, um, the book continues talking, and he mentions um, like a counterexample, which is a scientist called Sewell Wright, um, and uh, Sewell Wright um, seemed to be making a case for causation, although he wasn't strictly a statistician, so so he was relatively outside from the field. And um, this this scientist, Sewell Wright, was studying the heredity of guinea pigs. And you know he elaborated a mathematical model, path diagrams that included causation. And through this work, he he managed to you know to make a sort of merging, a marriage between data, the quantitative side, and arrow information, which transmits uh, the qualitative side of information. So an important aspect of, of Seawall's investigation is the idea that causal analysis is not the same thing as causal discovery. And uh, his approach required like um, scientific thinking and a degree of subjectivity, you know, rejecting canned procedures. One of the good things or bad things of statistics is, you know, you have a series of canned mechanisms that you use for processing data. You don't have to think really much about the meaning um, beneath the data and so on. So, so this Sewell Wright was heavily criticized. He was ostracized by the statistics uh, establishment and by the next generation Pope of Statistics, Fisher. So he remains like a, a lonely hero, like defending, defending a causal incorporation of, of, of statistics, of, of causality into statistics, but he mostly gets ignored, as, as happens in a lot of scientific fields, when there is a strong established paradigm and you know, any other alternatives are just rejected. Um, so other fields, not statistics, but some other disciplines like sociology and economics do take some of Sewell Wright's um, um, discoveries and investigations further on, but um, the author describes them as, you know, incomplete or bad spin-offs of the work. Um, Sewell had a long life, and even as late as 1983, he keeps participating in conferences and insisting on the fact that data is not enough, that, you know, the traditional statistical reliance on the first run of the level of causation, thinking that just accumulating enough data and just uh, using the, the traditional tools of statistics will allow you to get all the information you need to get will not pay off. And this chapter finishes with um, with um, the author Julia Pearl's discovery or, 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 or attempt at incorporating Bayesian statistics as a way forward. Bayesian statistics is a flavor of statistics that in some respects is opposed to or goes counter the grain of traditional statistics because it includes priors, it includes the subjective, and uh, but, but still it is respected as a part of statistics. So, so so it's easier for stats people to accept arguments through the framework or through the through the lenses of Bayesian statistics. And uh, this is what actually got Judea Pearl started on his way towards uh, his theorizing on causality. So this is, uh, we've got to the end of chapter two, and I think I'll leave this video for now. And uh, in the next video, I will continue making summaries of different, uh, different, uh, chapters that follow.